Whatever you do, please do not quit your job to go day trade right away. Keep your job and grow your small trading account slowly by following these three important criteria. So you and I must have had very similar situations. I didn't come from a rich family. I didn't inherit a trust fund. And let's be real, if I did, I wouldn't need to trade. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the three important factors of how I traded part-time while working a full-time job. Not only am I gonna talk about the specific strategies I used personally myself, but more importantly, how to manage your time and prepare yourself financially and properly properly allocate enough time and effort into building your small account trading part-time. As always, these videos take me a long time to make. That's the time I could have spent cruising around in my Lambo. So if you don't mind, please remember to drop a like on the video. I'd really appreciate you, my friends. So the first important factor we're gonna talk about is time. When is the most optimal market hour to trade part-time? And of course, the biggest question you're probably wondering, how exactly do you find the time to trade part-time while working a nine to five? At the end of the day, we all have the same 24 hours. And if you wanna squeeze in an extra two hours to trade before going to work or 30 minutes before the market closes, it all comes down to very meticulous time management. What I did as a trader from the Pacific West Coast time zone is that I will wake up at 4 a.m., which will be 8 a.m. market time. Then I'll use the time from 5 a.m. to 6.15 a.m. to prepare my watch list. I didn't have any fancy scanners back then, so I just used Finviz, Stock Market Watch, and StockCharts.com to do my free research. And I'll also use a Thinkorswim platform scanner to scan for the pre-market gappers. If you're interested in seeing how I set up the free gap up scanner in Think or Swim, then check out this other video. So after I prepare the watch list, I'll trade from 6.30 a.m. to about 8 a.m. Focusing on some long strategies, specifically at the open, which we'll be talking about those specific strategies later on in the video. And what's so great about trading at the opening first 30 minutes is that you almost always get an immediate follow through on your pre-market gappers. Either some low float stock will reclaim daily levels and break out on high volume and go parabolic, or another penny stock will pop at the open and sell off on day two or day three. Whether you are a long bias or short bias trader, the opening 30 minutes to an hour is where you can make the quick trades and be done for the day and head out for work. Note I said quick trades, but not easy. So that's exactly what I did. And you know, most of the time I'll end up showing up 30 minutes late for work, but as long as nobody at work found out, it's okay. I hope none of my former bosses or supervisors are watching this. I'm not suggesting anyone to go to work late, by the way. Don't hold me liable if you lose your job. Please do your job and keep your job because you're gonna need that stable income in order to trade well on the side. And during the day at work, yes, I do check up on my phone once a while to see the overall market condition. But generally speaking, I did not trade while I was at work. And even if I do, that's just to close the rest of the position I had already entered from the morning. And generally, those will be the mid cap and the large cap stocks. I never like to hold small cap penny stock positions open while I'm at work because there was just no way I can keep an eye out on any of the PR or stock price movements. Imagine if a penny stock drops a midday offering while you are on an important call at work. Or imagine if you walk into a meeting with wind on your feet, knowing that you're up a thousand dollars, and an hour later when you walk out, you see that you're down three thousand dollars. I know you must be thinking, come on now, humble trader, this must be one of your world-renowned bad jokes. But seriously though, that was a true story. Let me tell you, for the rest of the day, making that three hundred dollars at work, minute by minute, slowly, for the next six to seven hours, was not enjoyable. And it truly affected my performance and my full-time job. So after that incident, I didn't want to take that kind of risk anymore if I cannot fully concentrate on the ticker. So that's why I always made sure to either close my entire position or only leave a quarter of the size on. Whether you want to manage your full size position on your phone or on your desktop while at work, that's entirely 
totally your decision, of course. I'm just sharing some of my tragic story for a much needed reality check. And of course, besides trading the first hour of the market open, I also try to find time to trade during the last hour before the market closes. And for me, that will be 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. local time, which will be lunchtime for me at work. And yes, that did mean I had to say goodbye to socializing with my coworkers at lunch and also the amazing gym and yoga sessions at work. But that's just the kind of sacrifice that you might have to make. During power hour, I actually don't actively day trade. Most of the time, I spend the hour researching on stocks that's closing strong on the day and holding key daily levels. And I would sometimes take a swim position long overnight. I rarely day trade during power hour. This is the basis of my buy overnight strategy video. And this will be an especially valuable setup to the US traders who are under pattern day trader rule. If you buy a stock with the intention of holding it overnight and sell the next day pre-market or at the market open, that does not count as a day trade for you. Fortunately, I'm in Canada, so I never had to deal with PDT rule. See, there's tons of perks of being Canadian. Besides the fresh air, the unlimited supply of maple syrup, and expensive gas prices. Now I will say though, this swing overnight strategy is rather seasonal and the opportunities come and go depending on the market conditions. So don't expect to be swinging something overnight every single day while at work. There were some months of the year where I just don't buy or sell anything during power hour. But the work doesn't stop there after the market closes. If you haven't noticed by now, this trading part-time while working your 9 to 5 business actually requires both full-time effort and you to hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Studies show that once you hit the like button on this video, your trading account is more likely to grow a thousand percent in 2020. And at the end of the day, after getting home from work around 7.30 p.m. to 8 p.m., I will still spend at least two hours to research the market, see how the, all the gainers from the morning watch list performed and make note of any offerings any earnings and news for next day. And from the evening studies, I would pick the stocks I want to play potentially the next morning. Most of the time, I actually prefer to play the stocks that I already studied for the night before. And that's because I already spent two hours looking at a float structure, the catalyst, and how the stock trades intraday. And of course, I would already have the support and resistance levels drawn out beforehand. So that would help me react to the price movement and the volume the next day. The truth is, 90% of the work in trading happens outside of market hours and definitely before you enter a position. It's the preparation you put into your trading, either pre-market, after hours, or even before bed, that's going to give you better chances of making it in this game. Yes, you're right, doing all that work still doesn't guarantee 100% that I'll make a profit. But the odds are definitely better than if I were to wake up 30 minutes before the open and stumble to my computers and trying to follow chat room alerts. And I'll be honest here, that's exactly what I did in the first six months of my trading career. I had no plan each morning, no support and resistance levels drawn out, no idea what the catalysts are, the stocks float, any fundamentals. All I had was a list of 1 to 10 tickers from the chat room with headlines on it. What exactly was I supposed to do with that? And with a list and some chat room alerts, I was so naive thinking that I can make some quick and easy money from clicking a few buttons in 30 minutes and while in my pajamas and messy bed hair, and sometimes even hungover. Okay, okay, I was just kidding about the messy hair part. I know, I know, this doesn't sound at all like the easy working one hour a day Lamborghini money that you and I were promised when we bought that $5,000 DVD. Because I'm being real here, trading is not a hobby, it's a business. You're essentially trying to start a part-time business that requires full-time effort while you're working your 9 to 5 job. Well, in my case, it was more like a 9 to 7 job and sometimes even 6 days a week. So if I could do it, 
it while maintaining 10% of my sanity, 50% of my normal sleep schedule, and only 30% of my personal relationships, you definitely can do. Now, the second thing that will be extremely beneficial for you if you're trading part-time while working a full-time job is utilizing range orders or bracket conditional orders on your broker platforms. So let's say you want to enter this penny stock, SIPA, at $2 because you see that it's breaking the downtrend intraday and reclaiming key daily levels and there's a lot more room to go. But you want to make sure that if a stock goes in your direction, you get to sell, but also to cut your losers small if it goes against you. So the solution is you can use range orders or bracket orders that allow you to attach stop losses and take profit orders once you enter a position. So that's say your buy limit order on SIPA gets filled at $2, you can attach a stop loss market order at $184 and a sell limit order at $250. So that's something I used to do on mid cap and large cap stocks, not penny stocks go. Like I mentioned before in this video, when I was building my small account slowly, I preferred to trade these higher price and higher market cap stocks because they are way less volatile and there's almost always fresh gap with catalysts. So most brokers out there offer you these range orders and bracket orders for you to use. TD Thinkorswim has it, Interactive Brokers and Trade Zero, they all have these order types. Now, the third important factor to understand when you're trading part-time while working a full-time job is to do yourself a huge favor and keep your job. Contrary to what all these lifestyle marketing in the whole day trading industry tell you, quitting your job to day trade altogether is really not as glamorous or as easy as it may seem. For me, like any good first generation immigrant, I went to college, I got a job, I got a decent paying job in the film and VFX industry. It pays pretty well, but it's not like a six figure annual salary with a 50,000 signing bonus at Facebook or Google. But hey, it's well enough to support myself a comfortable life as a single individual with no dependent I was not rich by any means, but I really do believe that having a stable income from my job was a key factor that allowed me to trade well after quitting chatroom alerts and slowly build up my small trading account while trading part-time. Having that guaranteed income from your job will provide you the financial stability and the mental comfort to take trading slow and allow yourself the time you need to learn about yourself as a trader. Whether you are better at loaning or shorting, what strategies you're good at, are you better at penny stocks or mid cap and large caps, these are all the things that you need to give yourself time and more importantly, market tuition to learn. Having a stable income that you can count on is the only way that you can allow yourself to be not so attached to the money. It's unfortunate, but losing is part of the business in trading. It's inevitable. The key is to control your losses and keep them small. And the only way you can actually cut your losses small is if you are not relying on trading profits to pay for your rent, your food, or providing for your kids and family. I read this amazing quote from this trader slash businessman from Twitter, I'm never going to forget it. Learning to trade means living a few years of your life like most people won't, so you can live the rest of your life like most people can't. Like I mentioned earlier, it all comes down to sacrifices. Do you want this bad enough? Maybe it means partying a little bit less on weekends, eating out only once or twice a week, and sleeping only five to six hours, or just not have a life like me. But of course, if everything I just talked about sounds like too much work and too much time, there is still hope. My answer to that, chatroom alerts baby, gives you 100% success rate 1% of the time. Now you must be wondering what exactly is this long setup that I talked about that I personally use to trade at the market open and one hour before the close. Well, you're in luck. Make sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell because in part two of this video, we're gonna be talking about the specific loan strategies that's suitable for part-time traders growing their small account while working a nine to five. So if you want me to make the video, make sure to comment below and let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching as always. I'm the Humble Trader and I'll see you guys next week.